In our course, Separation Processes, we focus our calculations during the drying theme on drying with air. There are, however, other methods of drying that you should be aware of. Let us therefore talk about freeze drying and drying with superheated steam. In freeze drying, the drying goods are cooled down to temperatures below zero or to wet temperatures below zero, such that the material freezes. The pressure is lowered. Descriptions of freeze drying might use the word uh, vacuum here, but it's not a true vacuum. It's just low pressure. A gas, typically air or nitrogen at low pressure is allowed to flow across the drying goods. By gently heating the drying goods, the frozen water sublimates, that is, goes directly from solid ice to gas. As the pressure is low, there is little convection. So the water vapor is mainly transported from the drying goods to the gas stream through diffusion. As the process thus relies on diffusion, freeze drying is a slow process. Freeze drying is often used for foods as the structure and aroma of many food items are often uh, reasonably well preserved when freeze dried, at least when compared with alternative drying methods. Drying with superheated steam might sound like an impossible task. How can you remove water by adding more water? In drying with superheated steam, steam is first superheated, that is, heated to a temperature above its condensation temperature. The superheated steam is then led into an ad adiabatic dryer. The drying goods should be preheated to the condensation temperature of the steam before being led into the adiabatic dryer. In the adiabatic dryer, energy is transferred from the superheated steam to the drying goods such that some of the water in the drying goods evaporates. The flow of steam out from the adiabatic dryer is thus slightly larger than the flow of steam into the dryer. The temperature of the steam gradually decreases in the dryer and the drying must end when the temperature approaches the condensation temperature of the steam. A benefit with drying with superheated steam is that some of the energy can be recovered by condensing the outgoing steam using the released energy, for example, to drive an evaporator or a distillation process. On the downside, the drying goods do need to be heated to rather high temperatures, namely the condensation temperature of the steam. So this is a, not a suitable drying process for heat sensitive products. To get a feeling for how drying with air compares to drying with superheated steam, let's compare drying using steam and air at 150 degrees. Let us assume that we create the air by heating fresh air at 20 degrees, having a relative humidity of 50%. In drying with superheated steam at 150 degrees and one atmosphere, the mass balance becomes S plus W times X in equals S plus W times X out plus L, where W is the mass flow of drying goods, X is the water content of the material, and L the amount of liquid water evaporated per second. Using S to denote uh, the steam flow, and remembering that the boiling point at one atmosphere is 100 degrees, the energy balance becomes S times enthalpy at 150 equals S times enthalpy at 100 plus L times the evaporation enthalpy. If we solve for L in the mass balance and solve for S in the energy balance, and divide the mass balance with the energy balance, we get L divided by S equals enthalpy at 150 minus enthalpy at 100 divided with the evaporation enthalpy. Looking up the values in a table, we get L divided by S equals 2777 minus 2676 divided with 2256 or 0.045 kilogram of evaporated water per kilogram of steam. We thus need rather a lot of steam for each kilogram of water we want to evaporate. The drying goods need to be heated to 100 degrees and the driving force for the heat transfer starts at 50 degrees and approaches zero. In the worst case, and using a counter current steam dryer, 
the dry goods may reach close to 150 degrees. In drying with 150 degrees air, if we start with fresh air with a relative humidity of 50% and a temperature of 20 degrees, we see in an appropriate Molière diagram that tea wet will be approximately 41 degrees. So the drying goods needs to be heated to 41 degrees. In the countercurrent dryer, the drying goods could theoretically reach up to almost 150 degrees, but if the drying goods are heat sensitive, a co-current design can be chosen instead. In a co-current dryer, the driving force for heat transfer in the inlet is 150 minus 41, which is 109 degrees. In the outlet, we may approach a driving force close to zero degrees if we let the relative humidity of the air approach 100%. That is, if we have an infinitely long dryer. See the video up there. On average, drying with air thus gives us a better driving force for heat transfer than drying with superheated steam. Looking at the Molière diagram, we see that the water content in the air goes from 0 0.0072 kilogram of water per kilogram of dry air to around 0.052, which gives us a change in air water content of 0.052 minus 0.0072, which is approximately 0.045 kilogram of water per kilogram of dry air. Thus, approximately the same volume of air is needed as the volume of steam needed. To summarize steam drying, a benefit is that it's possible to reuse the energy for example, by using the outgoing saturated steam to heat an evaporator. A downside is uh, that we need to heat our drying goods to a higher temperature, which is not good uh, for heat sensitive materials. Another downside is that the driving force for heat transfer is lower than for driving with air under similar circumstances.